Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang and you're listening to the TL podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. Hey. Hey. How's that lunch, Teal? Like it, mate, eh? We all heard it. Oh, we all heard it. Yes. 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 We all heard it. Waited. Chris, you, you heard it? We went live. Lou, you heard it? Oh, <laughs> finally got him. Good try. Uh, Good try. Uh, How's right. that taste? Awful colonel, you said, mate. if we're late, that's lunch. Yes? To the podcast, not... On the technicality, the- guys, from a guy who's taking everything on. Um, okay. <laughs> well, it was a technicality as usual. <laughs> we have issues. How's it going, all right? Yeah, really good. Hey, everybody. Okay, so uh, what, a great idea. what a great idea. Come on, Cam, the wine. Yeah, wine first. So apparently it's International Pinot Noir Day. Yes, please. Yes. Inform us. So we all bought white wines because that's what Pinot Noir is, apparently. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's all red. Maddie. Maddie, if you're watching, Pinot Noir's a red. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for the naughty media. boy. Uh, oh, well, mate, I just, I just I'm throw it out there. So, everyone, the idea was everyone brought their best Pinot Noir today. And I, from what I hear, some of us had a go and some of us really, really didn't. So, <laughs> yeah. Chris. Speaking of I people who didn't have a go. Yeah, I, I've, uh, you want me to go first? Yes. <laughs> we're starting yeah. from the bottom. Shit, the problem is, it's that good that I forgot it's not a screw top. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it a screw top. Is that bloody good? Oh, well, I'll be back in a minute once I talk about it. So this is, uh, it's called a Cambria. There we are. A Cambria. It's a, uh, a Californian Pinot. Um, and it's called Julia's Vineyard. And I don't know if it's if it's a coincidence. Famous coincidence, for the Pinot Noir, but, California. That, say that again. California, famous for its Pinot Noir. Yeah, I oh, know it's not, but you know what? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it's called Julia's Vineyard. And this Julia, who made this wine, um, her surname is Jackson. So I wonder if there are any she's any relation to the Kendall Jackson Vineyard that's also in California. Um, but it's a different... A different winery, so I don't know. Um, did any of you guys actually look at it? <laughs> what does it taste like? <laughs> what, yeah. I don't know. And I haven't opened it. I have to bite the top off. Um, <laughs> did any of you guys look up the actual grape, the Pinot, and why it's uh, yeah. it's, it's known as the um, the soft grape or the the special grape or something or other? Um, it, it's got a very thin skin, and when they when the pickers and the growers handle it, they have to be very very careful. At a certain time, or they'll destroy the crop if they don't handle it the right way. So um, yeah. that's why it's not used as much as a lot of the other ones. Yeah, it, it's called it's called Pinot mainly because it's got the the shape of a cone. Mm-hmm. That's what I've seen as well. It's it's derived from the two like pine and then black. The two French words like Pinot Noir. Is that right, Thomas? Because the the yeah. grapes um, have a tightly clustered thing, which mm-hmm. re- represent a um, pine cone. Yeah, it's a red grape. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's but it's weird that it being a, a red grape, they still use it in champagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. What do you bring blue? Um, okay, so this one here, so it's um, Horton Burge. So it's a sixth generation Burge family. It's 2019 um, from Tasmania. So um, it's a it's. In the rolling hills apparently um really lovely spot it's the um Corrington park homestead which is a spiritual home for the spiritual home for the birch family apparently so the um uh the um family basically they said they're, they're big on family and uh cornelia bay, cornelian bay is where their mother grew up helen so that's why they um they call this the heart of the family so apparently it's a good one but i don't i'm not a big drinker of this so you know, it's hard for me to know a good one from a bad one, to be honest, but it's International Pinot Day, so why not? Mm. I had uh, Maud, uh, 
Ah. The first uh, one of the first uh, winery in um, New Zealand, central uh, Otago, about an hour and a half uh, north from Queenstown. Mm -hmm. And usually Pinot Noir, we have to drink it within two to five years, right? And um, for me, Maud is uh, the Pinot Noir that you have to have. So I thought, better get it. Mm. Nice. It would be the Pinot Noir you had to have unless you had mine, mate. So, oh, yeah, well, took, took so much to somebody help you. Uh, I told Thomas to see my uh, secret bottle shop yesterday. He saw the wonders within. Mm -hmm. When I need a good bottle, it's where I go. It's um, magnificent. Absolute cracker. One thing I will say about Pinot people who don't like red wine generally or are learning to drink it, Pinot is a good place to start because yeah. usually, as same with the grape, it's a bit softer and a bit weaker. You don't have the tannins and the, and the, some of the stuff that puts people off a heavy red. So uh, I don't mind it. And you can also have it cool. You can chill Pinot and you should chill it a little bit. So it's a good bridge between a white wine and a heavy red. So I have a uh, 2018 Pinot from uh, Burn Cottage. It's also a Central Otago uh, Pinot. So unlike California, if you are going to buy a Pinot, it should be Tasmanian or New Zealand. Generally speaking, mate, cool climate. It's international Pinot Day. So it's a, it's a got cool. Got to over the world, mate. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, a, it's, it's a cool, a cool climate wine where uh, <laughs> most of California is desert. So well done. Chris. No, 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 don't go, don't go there. Unless, unless you want to use Pinot Noir for cooking <laughs> <laughs> or petrol. I'm uh, and I was I was pretty happy. I asked the guy in the shop, "What's your best Pinot?" It wasn't the most expensive one, but it almost was. And I'd already picked this one up, and he said that that one. So he's either a good salesman or he's having a lend to me. Um, and I was I was pretty okay. keen until I saw the word organic on it. So um, I'm a bit. Oh, uh, you're gonna love it. I'm a bit trepidatious because the only organic wines I've ever had suck balls, and that's from they've been from the hunter though. So. Um, I didn't swear, Chris. I just, I just, <laughs> just I love the fact that anyway, you still went down that road. You're gonna love it, I think. <laughs> Bottom to that. Very good. Bye. Yes. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Big man. Cheers. Big ears. Cheers, guys. It's good. Oh. Mm. You're still with us, Chris? Because <laughs> <laughs> so we're not competing, Thomas, fill, me, fill, fill everyone in on what the scores were on the Yeah, yeah. Um, yours was about uh, 4.2. Um, mine was 4.07 something. Uh, <clears throat> Louise was a 3.9. If I was right, oh, well. if, if I remember, and uh, this is and, why I asked. And, and Chris, uh, forget it. Let's let's. It's been the three point nine. No, it's, Chris is three point three. That's why my, it is. That's uh, when I when I saw three point three, I didn't know whether it was a pH of vinegar or <laughs> when it was split. <laughs> and that may be. I'm a the... four. I'm a four. No, but no, you have to average it. You have to average it for all the done a lot of episodes, Chris, so that may be the worst wine ever produced on this podcast. <laughs> oh, I know Stephen, Tom Stephen Thompson had a crack at the title once with a, a middle <laughs> shelf Liquorland special. No, but... no one no one can ever beat your non alcoholic one. Uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> who had that? Who had oh, that? I was on a health kick uh, and I had oh. to bring in furniture polish. Seriously. I'm tired. I drank too much. And, uh, wasn't uh, it one that Chris bring out of the garage once still have bits of cork and stuff in it, though? Yeah, yeah that was a Christmas party, though, not a podcast. Oh, okay. He saves, he saves the real good stuff for special occasions, Luke. <laughs> hey, listen, this is what happens when you go away with your wife and spend everything on the weekend. Now you have to drink vinegar with your mates. Well, I, I, was I, 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 literally. He was literally 15 minutes ago telling us he's flying business class for the first time ever, and now he's drinking. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. You live in carry on. What the hell would you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know.
Go back in the moat. I live in a castle, mate. I've got a moat. I've got a moat around my house. I live in a castle. Don't worry about me. Did your pool still leak? Yes. Thanks for asking. (laughs) This bottle doesn't. (laughs) What's making news this week, you guys? I think the. Well, I want to go. If we can, I'll lower the tone for a second just to go back to last week for a little bit because it turned out that Paul Green didn't kill himself. Yeah. I was sort of fearing that he uh, did based on the... Based he on the did or he didn't, Cam? He, he did. did. He did. He did. <laughs> and the, the, the problem with it was and why I thought it might have been that track is the bloke had been a winner his whole life. He'd been the best footy player in Australia for a long time and he... he also won premierships as a coach and every every aspect of his life was being a winner. And then in the last two years, he got sacked by the Cowboys. He'd been there eight years. He'd won them their first premiership, but the team started to not go so well, so they sacked him. And then he had a year as a Queensland coach, which went horribly. And the the flack that he caught because of that was horrible. And then at that, it's at the stage where it didn't look like he was going to get another coaching job in the NRL. So... Um, um, it was always when he died and died quickly and no one was sort of talking about it when he started to add things up. People who were used to winning or, or base their whole identity on winning really struggle when they don't win anymore, which is mm. something CL's been talking about a bit recently. There's no good basing your life on being number one because one day you're going to be number two and that isn't going to be good for you. So, But one thing it's uncovered and... and you know, we can talk about why we celebrate people after they're dead instead of whether they're alive. But it, it seems to have touched a lot more people than just your average. And he, he wasn't the biggest name in the world, but I've had I had many phone calls last week and this week from people checking in on me. And I've done the same for other people. A lot of people out there struggling at the moment. And and yeah. and, and awareness. People keep throwing around the, the word awareness. Everyone's aware of it. But we need to be more than aware. We need to talk about it. We need to yeah. do something about it. You need to do something for yourself. Not, 100%. You can have all the awareness campaigns in the world, but men kill themselves at a far greater rate than women. Um, you know, there's eight suicides a day and six of them are men. Women have more attempted suicides than men, but men get the job done more often. Um <laughs> which, yeah, it's true for everything in life generally. So, um, but I just think, and it was, it was, it was a, it's been an interesting two weeks. I think some of the people who were reaching out to me to check in were reaching out actually for them needing help. It was, you know, how are you doing? But, but deep down, I think that was people's way of sort of saying, I'm struggling a bit. And yeah. it was coming from a lot younger people than usual and coming from all sort of all sort of facets of life. And then when I started to ring around a little bit, I didn't really talk to anyone who wasn't going through a bit of shit at the moment. So um, I think, I, th- I don't know what we do, but I think we, we talk about, you know, <clears throat> are you okay day? And I, I believe that every day should be are you okay day, but I don't think any of us do it mm-hmm. ever. Any mm-hmm. of us, I don't think anyone who's sitting here can, can really claim to be, be at least calling someone every day to make sure they're all right or, or, or checking mm. in. And mm. One thing I did read, which was interesting as far as getting around awareness and having a conversation, I did read an article that suggested instead of asking people if they're okay, actually ask them if they're thinking about killing themselves and actually broach the subject because, because mm. you know, we're all going to say we're okay, right? But if someone's really doing it tough, the suggestion was, and it was from a, the ambassador for Lifelines, the guy who was the guy writing the article. He said, "Ask them if they're having suicidal thoughts." He said, "Yeah." yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think, uh, as with a lot of issues, we probably won't do it. Um, yeah, you know, even though the people we love and the people we care for, you, you won't ask them those questions. You'll instead will beat around the bush and say, "Oh, how are you doing?" And you hope that you get the magic answer. But um, I just think the mental health space is something that we continue to neglect. Um, I don't have any answers for it apart from having more conversations with people and, and continuing to remind people that you're there for them. But, um, yeah, I think um, that was all. That's all I wanted to... Mm. No, it's good. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's unfortunately a culture within the... Like with men that, you know, you're supposed to have this persona of being big and strong and be able to handle everything and... And that's why we sort of re- we retreat into our caves and, and we don't even talk to our best mates about it. Mm. And uh, I think people need to understand that while, you know, 
while you may not want to talk to your mates or your family, there's still professionals out there to help you. Mm. I mean, when we're sick, when we're sick within our physical being, I mean, we go, we go to the doctor for a mm. prescription or, or for whatever advice. Why can't, why can't we feel comfortable about going to a shrink or, you know, a psych, I don't know, psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever you want to call it for just some help? Yeah. Just like, just like, just like people in an organization who are a bit struggling with the business, calling somebody for help, you know, I think it's important that uh, we do that. Mm. But it is true, um, Chris, there is a lot of help out there, but I think people, um, I think a lot of people in the, in the, who are struggling, I think that they think at times that they're the only one that's struggling. And so actually asking for help, they feel like, oh, well, it's only me and I'm the only one that must be going through something like this. So they, they don't, um, whether it's fear, embarrassment or whatever. But I think like I did hear that between 18 and 40 is, is the, is the age group of where most men commit suicide. And it, it is like, you know, um, apparently in port is such a small town, but there's something like four or five suicides a day, you know, and yeah, that's for a small town. It's huge. It's huge. We have one of the higher rates, but you know, it's so it, it is sad, but I think, I think what I, and I particularly see, um, which really is one thing that I do really like, um, Steve, you guys all know, Steve, he is good with his mates and he does keep in touch with his mates. And I've had been sitting next to him whilst he's had conversations and there's been grown men on the other end of that phone crying, you know, and I think, wow, that's so good whether it's because they feel comfortable with him or whether he's just so open and, and, and able to even say if he's struggling with them. I think if you're vulnerable and able to have that conversation, say, hey, I'm struggling, that allows the other person to say, well, shit, so am I, you know? Um, it's, yeah, it's not a weakness. It takes courage to actually say, hey, you know what, I'm freaking struggling and what do I do? And that's yeah. the thing that yeah. I think needs to change. You're not a pussy or weak or a loser by saying, hey, I need help. You know, and you're not a pioneer, like you said, Lou. You're not a pioneer. Others are going through it. You don't have to do it no, by yourself. You're not the only one. There's help. There's help. Just reach out. There's help. And if yeah. you feel ashamed, feel shy, or whatever, you don't have to tell any of your friends or family. You can go get professional advice. That advice is confidential. Just pick yeah. up the bloody phone or walk into wherever you need to go, but go and get help. People yeah. who are in that state, mate, aren't going to do that. And that's what I was sort of saying. With the onus, I mean, yes, everyone has to help themselves, but they're not, when they get to that point, they don't, right? So I think the onus has to be on us as humans to to really check in with each other more. I think yeah. if, if sort of similar to what Lou said, if Steve's calling people and showing that he can be someone who's safe to talk to, then people will talk to him, right? And that's, that's what we've got to do. Someone who's, someone who's, got to the point where they're actually thinking of taking their own life. I mean, Paul Green did it the day after his nine-year-old son's birthday. Jesus. I went to the shops. It was the day after the birthday party. She came home. He, he was dead. Someone like, and he'd seen all his best mates over that weekend. Cronulla had their old boy. So it was a big concoction of past glories probably building up on him, which got him to the point where, I, you know, I'm never going to be there again. So you don't know. It's a, that's a lot of speculation. But he, he had the opportunity to talk to, anyone within 48 hours of doing that. And I don't know if anyone sort of saw it in him to say, mate, something's not right. Talk to me, you know, and I, I think we're going to you, don't, you don't think hey. that he comes from a culture probably where you can't even talk and express like weaknesses unless you're in the toilet. Yeah. yeah. And then there's, there's, yeah, I guess. <laughs> He's talking about Caelan Ponga. But I mean, one of his, one of the guys that played with him, and one of the guys that spent that weekend with him before he did it, was Matt Rogers. And Matt Rogers' dad killed himself, and Matt Rogers' brother killed himself. And he said he's coming out and said I didn't see anything in him that pointed to it. So I think no. you might not see it sometimes, but you just got to ask. Yeah. Yeah, you have played uh, at that level. I haven't, so I wouldn't understand. But is there anything about? Relating to concussions, to you've seen, you guys seen the movie, and I, I've shown you the movie. studies haven't, yeah, they, the studies haven't come out in rugby league yet, but there are a few players that have come out and said, when I die, give my brain to whoever you got to give it to 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 check. Mm. Um, but it will be, it'll be. There's no difference. It's it's well known in the NFL now. In the NFL, it got to the point where players were shooting themselves in the chest to preserve their brain, so that it would come out that it was head knocks that drove them to 
Jesus. What they've done. I heard right? today in the old enough Junior Sayo is one of the most famous. Junior Sayo is probably the most famous NFL player to kill himself. And he shot himself in the chest on purpose so that he could preserve his brain. And um, it will be head knocks, will be a cause of it. But I, I don't think it's any more prolific in rugby league than it is in life. I mean, I spoke yeah. to someone the other day about this. I had this conversation with someone and she said to me, look, in the last week, there's been three or two people that we know, not directly, but on a personal level. One of them threw himself off a bridge on the freeway in front of a in front of a truck. Um, the other one, then there was a story during the week about a ten year old kid that that got found in the school toilets, hanging, hung himself, and um, yeah, it isn't. I think contact sports and that are going to have a, a, probably have a more prevalence of, of brain damage and the associated effects of that, but. Um, it's more a culture. You only got to look, you only got to go back to what we were talking about a week before in rugby league, which was the gay pride stuff with Manly, right? And I said in when I was talking about that, I was worried about the players who didn't wear the jersey, I was worried about the players who did wear the jersey, and I was worried about everyone in between because, um, the culture again in the sport or whatever it is in society doesn't allow people to be who they are or speak to about who they are. And I was worried for anyone else in the sport who was thinking about coming out. I was worried about the people who were going to get death threats and the rest of it for not wearing. Like it's all this stuff that goes on and all this shit we do as a world that drives people to that point. And um, I, uh, awareness just isn't enough. I don't know. I, I don't know. But mm. yeah. all right. good subject, mate. Um, all right, what are we doing this week? All right, Let's talk about something we do know about. Well, some of us anyway. Selling houses. Um, I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh Chris, don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, in real estate, we list to last and sell to survive. But what makes you the best? I think mm. it's good that we're talking about a topic we 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 run here every week talking about stuff we we know about, but we don't do we don't do about. This is something we do every day. Um, so let's talk about it. What makes you a good real estate agent? No, not good. What makes you the best real estate agent? I don't know. Uh, Luis, you're the one who came up with this line. So uh, why don't we start with you? <clears throat> mm. um, I think there's lots and lots and lots of things that um, make a great agent. Uh, I don't think there's just, you know, a handful of things. I think, um, you know, I think first and foremost, um, you've we all know we've got to have goals. We've got to get have something that gets us out of bed every day. Um, we've got to have authenticity, confidence, lots and lots and lots of things. So I guess um, I don't want to go off on a tangent like I can, um, but no. How, 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 how are we going to do this? Are we going to go around the room and and give a few ideas, or are we just going to how we how do you want to do it? Because I can run. Well, just, yeah, we we'll start with you, and then we go whatever direction you're sending us. Then we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think, I think there's a lot, I, th I think let's start at superficial level. Okay. So I think you've got to, you've got to look after your appearance. I think you've got to look the part to be the part. And I think that helps with, unfortunately, we all know people judge a book by its cover. And so, um, if you turn up looking like a $2 agent, as opposed to a million dollar agent, you know, that that's not going to do you any favors. Um, we've all spoken about having two ears and one mouth. If you're the one doing most of the talking in your presentation, you're probably not listening enough and listening is where you're going to get the little bits of gold and, and create that relationship and that rapport that's going to get you in a position to know exactly the people's motivation, their plan and their needs and wants and, and being able to guide them in the right direction. Um, you've got to ask good questions, you know. Um, you can't... Yeah, languaging is important. You've got to ask good questions, you know. Um, you've got to know your market. You've got to have confidence. You, you, you're covering a lot of fields. That's what I mean. That's why I didn't want to go on a, I didn't want to go on a tangent, but this is... I think, I think that your tangent should have stopped at appearance and then it would have been fine because <laughs> <laughs> now it's giving, it's giving well, everything. I, let's... I, 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 don't know, I don't know, but first of all, I was thinking about your question uh, about list to last and then sell to survive and i'm just thinking is is really like everyone seems to be putting importance on listing is really listing the the key 
I think um, the reason why, and look, I didn't, I'm, I'm not going to take credit for that saying. I can't remember where it came up. And, you know, Stephen and I often say it in our business, um, but we've been saying it for many, many years. And the reason why we say that is because you can't sell what you don't have. If you've got the listings, the buyers will always be there. But if you can't list, then you're going to find it hard. You can sell, but you know, you're relying on the other people's listings to sell. So hence why we, we sort of, I don't know whether we did come up with it or whether it came from somewhere. I think the question in general has a bit of a negative comment. The, the, the statement has a bit of a negative connotation to it. It's very um, lasting and, and surviving. Where's thriving in it? Where's, where's growing in it? And where's in the best being, <laughs> hey? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, and that, the best. yeah, the best aren't, I can tell you one thing the best agents aren't worrying about lasting or surviving. I can tell you that to, for 100%. That's that's the first thing that needs to be the best is a, the mindset of being the best. And that isn't worried about survival and that isn't worried about lasting. So um, the, I don't think the two parts of the question actually match each other. But um, I, I, I personally did not believe in the, the first uh, part. I, I, personally believe that if you want to last, it's about prospecting and the cultivation of the contacts you have. Because I have, I've seen, I've seen people who can list. I mean, I just, what is that? What is that? Stomach again. He's just had that 3.31. Yeah. Just, just yesterday. <laughs> Just yesterday, I was I was in in a room and uh, with with a lady that I know. I look at her, and I go, she can just list anything she wants, but she's not prospecting. And and when I know that she's not prospecting, there is no chance of sitting in front of anyone. So I don't believe that listing is going to be the key to last it. I think you want to last. There's a kid who's been in the business for twelve months. I mean, you look at him, you still think he's a kid. But he's got out, and this month has taken has, has grabbed six listings, and and he's beaten people who are better. But and 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 when you have a look, the six listings comes from the fact that he's been doing the numbers, calling people and door knocking every single day. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I wrote a list. Yeah. I wrote a list, but number one on the list was talk to the most people. I wrote a list of what do the best do, mm. the best. Talk to the most people. Real estate is a really simple game. Sometimes too simple. You and sometimes because it's so simple, you get bored. So you try and change how simple it is. Now, simple and easy. I'm not saying easy for anyone out there shouting saying it's easy. I've gone through the whole lot, so I can't be accused of anything of the sort. Simple. Talk to people. List their house. Sell their house. That's real estate, right? It's it, but starts with talking to people and if I talk to 100 people and you talk to 20 people I win I'm going to win every day I'm going to win every week I'm going to win every quarter and if you don't do that the rest doesn't matter doesn't matter what you look like Lou if you're not standing in front of anybody oh no I absolutely Cam and that's not the most important thing absolutely it's no yeah I'm not even attacking you there I'm just saying like <clears throat> presentation and all that stuff nothing nothing happens I could be sitting here on the phone naked right and I'll beat you. If Please talk don't. To I could be sitting on the phone calling people naked, and you could have a twelve hundred dollar suit. But because I'm calling people, I win. I win. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, and that's it's people and numbers. It's people and numbers, and that's really what real estate boils down to. Um, and I heard a good line during the week: to be a great, to be a good agent, have have the empathy of a good friend and the competitive competitiveness of an athlete. You know, and I thought, well, you know what? That's that's pretty well sums it up because you know we all know it boils down to relationship um and and having a ha being able to create good relationships and it always is people numbers if you if you've got the empathy of a good friend and you and you and you've got the competitiveness of an athlete um whether that's with you competing with yourself or competing with the your competition or you know a healthy com competition within your own team and i thought you know what well, that pretty well sums it up but even competition doesn't lead to talking to people. I know some bloody competitive guys, but they spend all day, one, coming up with problems on why they can't do something, or two, coming up with the wrong solutions and putting all their focus in the wrong stuff, thinking that that's going to help them beat. They spend all day trying to work out how they can get their heads on more 
open home signs and business yeah. cards than they do talking to people about selling their house. So it's it's you know, focusing on the you know talking to people and you know further down the list is doing the right things at the right time. But that's you know unless we get past number one, which everyone hates. And there was a conversation in the office the other day about oh, hating prospecting and you know well oh, we hate it but we've got to do it. And I said I love it. And they said what do you mean? And they said, you don't do it anymore. And I'm like, fair call, that's fine. But I did a bloody shitload of it to get what I've got, right, and to get where I am and to get to the point where I can ask people to do it for me. Nothing happens in real estate without prospecting. I've, Why can you love it, hey? I've been told you never prospected. Not a day in my life. Not a day in my life, never prospected. I never sat there and did 150 calls and I never got yelled at once for going home on 148 calls at 8 o'clock at night to try and get home to my family. That no, never happened. That's what I mean. The people, I've been there and done it. So um, it doesn't bother me now. I've never, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I've gone off three days in my life. I've built my whole career on the phone. Right? And I'm, I'm, I probably would have been healthier if I didn't. But for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm a bit, I'm shy. I don't do well sometimes meeting people for the first time which sounds crazy in this industry but knocking on people's doors isn't my thing so i did it on the phone and got bloody good at it but i did more of it than anybody else right? and if, you know I did more than anybody else and because i did more than anybody else now i can speak to it but i think that's a good point cam because i have agents in my office that cannot whether it, whether it's whether they cannot or they do not want to door knock but you know what? They're terrific on the phone. And then I've got others that won't pick up the phone and they'll door knock all day. And it's I think it's important to work Nothing on your wrong with that. Exactly. Work Let in them your go. Yeah. Work Nothing your... wrong with that. Exactly. You know, when I when you we, I read this like when you put this subject up, I was looking at it, I've taken it from sort of the point of new recruits, new people coming into the industry, not necessarily people who may have been there for a while, right? And I thought back when I started, and I've come from an industry where I, I knew most of everything into an industry where I knew next to nothing. And I, the first word I come up with was be humble um, and realize you don't know. If you're coming into the industry, you don't know. Mm. And it's okay not to know. <laughs> yeah. So it's not okay not to ask. Mm. So be humble and ask for help. Because mm. if you're lucky enough to fall in a, a place like with Cam, he says, do your calls, do your knocks, and mate, you'll you'll get there. And mm -hmm. so the first one is, you know, be humble. Also, mm -hmm. if you make a mistake, put your hand up and go, I made a mistake, how do I fix it? A lot of people but the, the problem is, uh, I, I just ask you about asking for help. And, and, and I think this is why I thought the subject about um, the, the death of uh, David Green was really pertinent, is that a lot of people want ask for help in this industry because we are only celebrating Top Gun and you're the best and you're this and, and you got listings and you don't. We, we don't even celebrate the guy that gave the listing appointment to the guy who got the listing, right? Wait, no, but let's forget him. Let's, let's celebrate the guy who lists. And so because we're celebrating all that Top Gun, how, how can I just go out and ask for help? Because if I ask for help now, definitely it's going to put me below the, the rest of the team or the, at least that person this the is don't the care, mate. that's back to that mindset the best don't care the question was what do the best do right the best ask for help the best of us anyone for help and mm. that's if you if you can't ask for help you're not going to get there i'm sorry that's that's you know it should we foster an environment i think you're getting to or should we foster an environment where it's easy for people to ask for help 100 percent, 100 percent. that's down to leadership yeah. But if you're not in that environment, what do you do? Yeah. And, do you blame and, the environment? Do you blame the environment, or do you do you overcome your issue? And I, I reach out external to my original office all the time. And yeah. you know, the first time TL stood up in front of a, a kickstart and said, "Oh, was it kickstart?" No, it was a whole whole network thing at the Hunter Valley and said, have a mastermind group. I walked up to him. I didn't really know him, but I said, you're going to be my mastermind. And he said, why don't you go and talk to someone else in the room? And I said, well, you're training them. So wouldn't I want you, not them? <laughs> um, and that was literally, you know, six months into the thing. But that was me overcoming the fact that oh, really? over, yeah. overcoming the environment and coming up with a different thing. So. Oh, really? uh, I sent you away. I sent you away. I remember. 
I was just in the garden. Yeah, I know I was in front of the podium because I but I, I sent you away because I thought a seed in the desert will never grow. And so I, I just sent you away and I thought you better go look for some other desert. <laughs> I kept growing, bro. I kept growing. <laughs> I was only 95 kilos then, brother. Oh man, I, I no, thought, it, not, I, I thought it, right at that point in time, I thought he was gonna let go of one of the F words uh, and I, I didn't get it. <laughs> Uh, no, I think if, I think we're going to talk about what the best do because that's what the question. I, all right, one, one of the things that I think that we have to realize as the best, and 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 a lot of people didn't realize, and and maybe because of the way we worded this subject for this week, it we talk about real estate, but it could be about any any subject, you know. Hundred percent. Like my sister who's listening right now, she's a nurse. So, and and I go some. To me, some people, they work to get their goals and some people, they get their goals and then they go to work. You have to know what style of person you are, yeah. because if you are one of the two groups, get yourself on that track and go for it. Yeah. Uh, there's some people who they, they, they work for years before they can go out and say to themselves, I deserve a Maserati. Some people, they get the Maserati and suddenly something in them just start to go, no, I have to go to work because I've got the Maserati to pay for and and there are things that they would be doing that they wouldn't do because when you feel, for example, let's imagine you feel not good enough, not deserving of good things. Why would you want to go and work for that Maserati? What you're going to do is to spend more time telling yourself why you shouldn't work because the Maserati is not something you see yourself driving. And so first thing that people need to know is what type of person I am. I, I, I am the kind of person who actually gets things and then I go to work. You, you never see me rest, but that's why I go out and, and get things first. Mm, mm. Me I'm too. I'm in that box too. Me yeah. too, absolutely. And I think too, like we always talk about association, um, and it was a conversation that I had with my team this morning in our sales meeting. Um, you've got your association and it's very, very careful who you hang around and um, you know, you've got your people that drag you down, you've got your people that inspire you or ignite you, and then you've got your people that'll, yeah, they're good to talk to, and they're, they're sort of, you know, level. You, you don't get any good or bad out of them. But you've got to be careful with your time and be careful of who you hang, hang around. But your diet, and I said, you know, first you've got to look after yourself. And when I say that, it's, you know, looking after your health and all the rest of it. But your diet can, consists of not just what you eat. It's what you're listening to. What are you reading? Who are you hanging around? What are you watching? You know, because there's people that um, where, where are your focus lies is what you focus on. And if you're always focusing on negative stuff or always watching the news before you come to work, you're never going to start the day on a good foot, you know. And so it's important to look, remind yourself of, who you're hanging around and what you're listening to, reading, and all the rest of it as well. Nice. Hmm. I, I, can, I, 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 I can see Cameron was thinking about something. What were you thinking of, man? Oh, no. Well, we went from association to what you do when you wake up in the morning. And I was just getting, I was starting to get confused. But that's all. I was just, all I'm thinking is the best, hang out with the best. That's, that's who the best hang out with. And it might not be the best in real estate, but you, a lot of top agents do mastermind together, but, but the best uh, in the field of finance, the best in the field of life, they, they hang out with the best. It doesn't, that's your, your association with when people say, be careful who you hang around. What do the best do? They find the best. What's the saying? If you're the smartest in your group, you're in the wrong group. Yeah. Listen, you, you are so true. You know, you're so right. Uh, when I was 23, I think my, my leader who was, um, Al Hurst in insurance took me to the snow and he did everything first class. Do you know that I still remember that today because when we went away, I was thinking like a poor man and I was doing things. That, and he said, no, Thomas, get this and, and do that. And we're going to do that. Now, come on, man. And, and suddenly I, I went, hold on, is that possible? And I see someone doing something that I thought was impossible. And when you see someone doing something that you thought was impossible, you go, no, it is possible. There's a guy doing it. And so hanging around those kind of guys and, and go and being around those kind of guys doing things that you never thought you could do, mm. it changed the way you think. To me, it's been now, what is it? <laughs> 70,000 years since Al has taken me uh, first class all the way to, to, to the snow. 
but I still know his phone number. And, and I haven't spoken to him in 30 years. I still know his phone number by heart. That's a simple thing, but again, not an easy thing, right? Because if you, you're someone like me, you get into a group of the best and you don't feel like you should be there, right? It's very hard sometimes to hang around the best, but that's that's part of the growth and that's something you've got to push on through. A lot of people won't call the best because they it don't. Can. When you say hang around the best, it's like what we were talking about. Some things are easier said than done. What about your family? Because what happens if you've got that negative parent that always sees a negative side of life or that, that friend that's always, you know, they might be your best friend. You know, it's, it's not always possible to hang around the best. You can't just cut your family off from your life. You know, but, no, you, but can you can go and search for something different. Your time. You can be mindful of your time and see, it's not, some people are sitting there going, well, it's easy to say hang around the best, but how do I even get to the best? And how, what do I just disown the people that I love in my life that may not be the best? That's, like, a, that's, a, decision, that's a decision you've got to make, mate, at some point along the line. But yeah. I have cut off many yeah. friends and and um, I have actually cut off many family, but that's not the point. When I wanted to know how to... In real estate, right? I, I haven't, I've lost Thomas's phone number. This is the only time I've seen. But um, when I, but here's the thing, Lou. When I was in an office that wasn't giving me what I needed, I picked up the phone when I wanted to learn how to manage a patch, and I called Darren Butcher because Darren Butcher is probably the best real estate agent. Yeah. I knew at the time, right? That's that's what I'm talking about. And when um, I, when I wanted to know about what to do with my money, I didn't call the brokers person I knew or ask my dead shit mates who were at the pub having a, having a beer with me. I called people yeah. who had money. Yeah. So is I mean, what you're talking about is a lot is huge. Um, and for some people, you know, you may have to make some pretty harsh decisions. But that's not but that's reaching out to the best is easy, mate. Yeah, reaching out, absolutely. And that's, all I, that's all I wanted to sort of clarify around is it's reaching out and not necessarily cutting off everybody in your life to hang around the best. And you know what I mean? And you, can have, mate, you can have mates and you can have friends who are just for going to the pub and having a beer with. But as long yeah. as you realise that the mates for going to the pub and having a beer with, not for taking life advice from or, or exactly. judging your career, you know, building your career right. off their advice, that's, 100%. you know, I believe that's that's the difference there. Who, Instead yeah. of the the best, be don't ask, the best don't ask a hairdresser for advice on how to sell houses, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. Exactly. Um, so In the book, I had a, Babylon. I, the second thing on my list to you, which sort of your sister's probably the queen of is in her job, is the best focus on giving, not getting. Yeah. Yep. The best have a mindset of how can I help nothing else. So don't focus on getting a list or getting a sale. It's, it's which which reminds me of what we spoke about at you and me yesterday. You know, uh, when I, I talked to my sister Anne on her day off uh, Sunday, she she wanted to go to the Grand Place, which I hope I'll, I'll take you at some stage, Cam, and there's a lot of beers that we have to drink in Brussels. Okay. But she went there first thing in the morning because she knew she had to go and spend the day with my parents. And on Saturday, that was a day off, but she took my...